it is difficult to really separate the Dakini of Seraphim with the rest of Seraphim entirely because even though they came well before the city, long before it was ever Seraphim, their influence in that region is so powerful. Not in a dictatorial way or anything like that, simply their presence exudes the, the wisdom and the consciousness of the Divine Feminine in a very specific way that integrates beautifully with the purpose of the later city of Seraphim. So the greater region of Seraphim contains that as well. It is all one beautiful lotus flower opening to the inner sun. And the Dakini, you might say, are the dewdrops that refresh it and bring it to life. So in that context, let us look at the spirit and music of the Dakini. The font of the Dakini spirit comes from their Pleiadian ancestry. On the particular planet from which they came, it was one of constant joy and acknowledgement of universal spirit. We tend to see our planet, you know, as being so divided, and it really is on the surface, but many of these worlds that are our star kindred are not divided like that. They may have little things that they have to deal with, yes, but generally a planet within a star system and usually many planets that are connected together because there's travel between them have very similar expressions, I guess you could say, of spirit. They're not like cookie cutter. They have their own, you know, texture, taste, and revelation within them, but um, they, they come together in a very understanding way so that um, they bring together all these different tapestries as one quilt and it is beautifully constructed so that even though there's diversity, the spiritual core is there and it remains pristine. And that is how it is with the planet from whence the Dakini came. So they bring this to the earth not just the inner earth, in the ways that they communicate to the surface world, in energy, in, in prayer, in music, they literally infuse that surface world with much of their sacred science, the science of beauty, joy, and happiness. Unfortunately, there aren't too many receptive people who are receiving it on the level it is offered but is nevertheless gifted to them. And it does help tremendously keep us together, keep us uh, of a spiritual nature. As mentioned in the previous chapters of the Sky Dancers, the Dakini love music. This is second nature to them and as important as it is to breathe. This is not only true for the, the 12 original Pleiadian Dakini, but their 52 daughters and the Karim. And this expression, this beauty is offered most specifically into Seraphim, where all the people of Seraphim are very much a part of that. And of course, as we said, the Dakini sisters, or rather daughters, uh, travel to other places in the inner earth as well to spread this, uh, this musical uh, prayer of life. When the Twelve first arrived from their home star, they brought with them sacred objects. And among those objects were texts, books, that were written uh, in their own way, not with pen and paper, but with light inscriptions 
So they're crystal objects that have light inscriptions within them and touching them like a smartphone <laughs> allows you to hear uh, the text being spoken. And these texts were, um, among them were songs, beautiful songs, the lyrics and the music. And there are songs for many occasions, not just for fun. None of them are just for entertainment. You know, uh, they're, they have to do with the stimulation of various areas of the brain for greater spiritual awareness, for the healing of different parts of the body, um, for a greater alignment to certain dimensions, you know, all of these kinds of things. And then there are those that are simply to uplift and bring spiritual joy into the being as we have entertainment do today only it's a it's a it's a greater reach than most entertainers today are able to um, to perform it's it's an incredible experience to listen to these recordings of the Pleiadian ancients singing their songs and so the the music they take from that and of course they re reproduce it themselves and they have written songs since then, and, and text books since then, many books, many texts. So they have a virtual library, and I do mean virtual, of incredible material within the inner earth. And it is not just about music. The histories of the Pleiadian races and beyond understanding of the universe very much similar to, you know, the texts, the, the transmissions that were given to me by Thoth and continue to be given along those lines, but with their own unique flavor and perception to it. And of course, the divine feminine figures very strongly in their work, but that is not to say that they put down the divine masculine by any means, but they are simply to, uh, you know, their, their work is to represent the divine feminine and how it relates to the divine masculine. So many of their texts and their teachings uh, revolve around that principle. The actual 12 rarely leave their island. They hold the core vibration there. And that is their purpose. They commune with their home star using a specific crystal that they brought with them. And this is a very sacred process for them. What they bring through in the cord that they hold, it's a streaming energy into their being, then can be disseminated out into the planet. Not only into Seraphine, but the planet, the geophysical planet, through their ability to hold this frequency. Now they're not just sitting and meditating all the time. They're doing other things like writing more texts and songs and things like that. But they spend a great deal of time in deep, I guess you'd call it samadhi, uh, where they are uh, in communion with that streaming through the Pleiades. And if you recall from my previous science teachings from Thoth, the Pleiades, Orion, and Sirius are the star plex of this planet. So it's not just about, oh, you know, we're gonna bring our homeland energy here and, you know, have our little colony. No, it's not that at all. They are representing that energy of the Pleiades that is part of our essential planetary being. And it is connected directly to the greater Orion cosmology as well as the uh, the Syrian. So their mission is broad. It is not just a small focus. The original 12 Dakini from the Pleiades are probably around 12,000 years old, as they were several thousand years old when Atlantis finally sank beneath the Pacific for the last time. They are probably among the most ancient beings in the inner earth. As I've mentioned in my past works, 
There's the Aura Healing Garden in Greater Seraphim. And I wrote about that and experienced it through remote viewing and and uh, I guess you could say astral travel or something like that um, as far back as the early 1980s. There are times when the daughters and the Kareem often visit the healing garden, the Aura Healing Garden, and they go to other healing locations as well. But the Aura Healing Garden is more specifically for communicating and receiving persons from the surface of the earth in their, what Thoth calls an in-between between remote viewing and astral forms, bringing them in there for healing of their vibrational bodies. And the persons from the surface earth who come there do so willingly, of course. They're receptive and open to doing that. They may not have any conscious memory of it, or maybe they do, some of them do. But that is what the garden is for. And I don't know that there really any other place is quite as unique as that in the inner earth. Of course, they also work with people to, in the inner earth, to help them adjust to the geomagnetic force fields of the planet that we all experience, but they have a unique kind of experience within the inner earth. But as I mentioned before, there's no disease, so they're not dealing with that in the inner earth. Yet, the Dakini are all about helping everyone, and so they do a lot of focus with souls who are currently incarnated on the surface of the planet. You may call upon the Dakini as a whole at any time. And we're speaking here of the Dakini in the inner earth, the original Dakini as Thoth calls them, which is somewhat different from how it has been brought forth on the surface of the earth. Not that the Dakini in its mythical level isn't important and has deep uh, ties and connections to the true inner earth Dakini. Certainly there is that connection, as I stressed in chapter one. But what I'm speaking of here is that you have the ability to connect to the Pleiadian Dakini and their daughters, and the Kareem, all who represent the Dakini in the sacred hollow of the planet. I personally have had experiences with one of the 12 Dakini. Her name is Charsi, and she has come in remote form to heal me. I see her standing at the foot of the bed working with my feet, not touching them, but her hands moving around them. When I say I see her, it's in my inner eye, but it's it's very real to me. And the result is very real. So in conclusion, let us enjoy a few moments of how I'm able to express through my art and inner vision, the Dakini, in the spirit and music of their being. <laughs> 